What's up guys, Sean here, and today we mark the beginning of a new year. It's 2020, things are gonna be different this year. I'm changing up the channel, I'm gonna go over new topics, give you guys new takes, do responses to new people, and this year we're gonna start it off right with a new video response to the Young Turks because they still can't recognize reality. It's gonna be the same, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, were you looking at the new mug that I got ordered from my Teespring store? Link in the description, promo code DUMBPROMO for 10% off. Shirts, mugs, whatever you want, I got it with logos and whatnot on it. Yeah, d definitely check that out. B go, uh, g go now. So today we're gonna go over a Young Turks video, which is something that I do pretty often on this channel. If I'm being a little honest, maybe too often, but probably not often enough. And this Young Turks video is about a series of anti-Semitic attacks, hate crimes, that have been happening in the New York City area, and the Young Turks' inability to talk about the attacks that are actually happening without changing the subject to Trump, Trump supporters, white people, and all these other things that have nothing to do with the attacks that we're actually talking about. Now I want to do something a little bit different with this video than I normally do, seeing as it's my first video of the year, unless this video gets demonetized, and then I make another video while it's being reviewed, and then I upload that video first, and publish it even though I made this one first, therefore making this the second video of the year. But regardless, it's the first video I'm shooting this year, so I wanna do something a little bit different with the structure. And what I'm gonna do is give away the point that the Young Turks are not making right here at the beginning of this video, so we can all laugh and watch as they struggle to dance around the actual point that's going on here. And that point is, and this, Fair warning may be shocking to those of you who are completely disconnected from reality, the normal average Young Turks viewer, that minorities, people who are not white, can be anti-Semitic. And dare I say it, even black Americans can be anti-Semitic. And not only can these non-white minority groups be anti-Semitic, but there's actually polling that tells us that a lot of these non-white groups are actually more anti-Semitic than the general population. For instance, 42% of Hispanics living in the United States that are born outside of the United States are anti-Semitic or hold deeply anti-Semitic views compared to only 20% of Hispanics born within the United States. And in fact, the main subject of today's video that despite it being the main subject of today's video is rarely mentioned by the Young Turks when talking about this topic, which is black Americans, turns out 30% or 29% of them hold deeply anti-Semitic views, which is much higher than the general population of 12% of Americans who hold these views. So now that you have a quick sample of some of the data that I'm going to be putting forward throughout the course of this video, which admittedly is old data, but we're gonna get into why I'm using old data in just a little bit, so just hang on to the fact that I'm using 2011 data. It's actually for a very specific reason. Let's get into the Young Turks' interpretation of what's going on. Over this weekend at a Hanukkah celebration, there was yet another anti-Semitic attack in New York. Now this is to just bear in mind, in just the last three weeks inside of just New York, this is the 13th anti-Semitic incident. No, that's amazing. I mean, there's something deeply, deeply wrong here. Um, so this attack was Saturday night. Uh, Mayor de Blasio had called for extra patrols in Brooklyn to protect Hasidic Jews there on Friday night, the night before this particularly vicious attack. Um, because there's been so many attacks back to back to back. Uh -huh. So look, uh, I'm a little bit more perplexed by this than I am by others. Now, we've tracked this, I would argue, as well as any show in America, uh, all going all the way back to when Trump started to rise in 2015. Up, oh, Jenks perplexed by these attacks, and he's more perplexed by these attacks than he is others. Because him on the Young Turks, they've been covering this probably more than any other show in America. And they've been covering it since 2015, since the rise of Donald Trump. Now, I just showed you polling data that shows Hispanics born outside of the United States, 42% of them hold deeply anti-Semitic views and 29% of African Americans hold those views. And those polls were done in 2011 
and they're actually consistent from a lot of the polls from the years before that, but it's definitely connected to Donald Trump, and I know that because Jenk following this more than any other show in the entire country, probably. So that I understand better than almost anyone having covered it exhaustively. And then we gave, we warned people, oh my God, watch out, anti-Semitism's coming, and then Charlottesville, and then the synagogue attacks in Pittsburgh and other places, and now this. So why am I perplexed that we, you know, we've been covering this ad nauseum, uh, and it is sickening uh, what's happening. Wait, wait, time out. I, I, I gotta make a point right quick. Um, if Jenk was following this more than any other show in this country, then why is he surprised about the 13 attacks around the Hanukkah holiday in New York City? Because I've been seeing videos of this because, you know, I've actually been following this. And if you follow me on Twitter over the past year, year and a half, I've actually been following this and I've been sharing these stories and people that I follow that you're familiar with from the internet have been sharing these stories. These attacks aren't new. This is just a concentrated amount of attacks over a very short period of time, but they're not new. They happen all the time in New York City around these holidays. In fact, the New York Times put out an article in 2018 about these kind of attacks being on the rise in New York City, and they talked about how they couldn't discern a pattern in the attacks because the attackers weren't white supremacists. But maybe Jank and the Young Turks missed all that, you know, because they have not been doing videos about these kind of attacks since they've been following it so closely since the rise of Donald Trump in 2015. Well, this guy was African American, so I didn't, it didn't look particularly right wing. I could be wrong about that. It's new and it's just kind of happened, and we're trying to figure out the uh, the details. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like they're all right wingers in the New York, New Jersey attacks yet. Again, we don't have anywhere near enough details. I like how he just says it. This guy was African American, so it didn't look particularly right wing to me, so I can't understand this. And this is not a joke, by the way. In fact, last year, the Young Turks did a video where they reacted to a Ben Shapiro speech. A speech where, by the way, Ben Shapiro brought up anti-Semitic attacks in New York City last year. And Cenk Uger had this to say about the prospect of left-wing anti-Semitism. And so, uh, and now let's get to the absurdity. Um, so, what left-wing anti-Semitism? So yeah, while this video is cringy and awful and terrible and downright embarrassing, like it is embarrassing to watch these two grown adults not talk about the actual issue at hand, and in fact, do everything humanly possible to not talk about the issue at hand, I'm not surprised by it because last year when Ben Shapiro is giving a speech and he's talking about Islamic anti-Semitism, which is not mentioned in this video, every other kind of anti-Semitism under the sun is mentioned in this video, but not Islamic. And he's talking about anti-Semitic attacks in New York City and Cenk Uger does a response video where he's like, left-wing anti-Semitism, how's that possible? I don't know why I'm doing a Bernie Sanders voice for Cenk, but y you get my point. But it doesn't look like they're all right wingers in the New York, New Jersey attacks yet. Again, we don't have anywhere near enough details. So, what's going on now? Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I'm not positive, John. This is Jank Uger, host and owner of The Young Turks, the fake news show that exists on YouTube that gets preferential treatment from YouTube and current congressional candidate for California's 25th district, saying that he doesn't understand these attacks even though they are clearly anti-Semitic because they don't look particularly right wing to him, even though they could be, they still could be. I'm not saying it's not the right wing. Somehow, you know, some mental gymnastics can make this orange man's fault. But right now he can't figure out exactly how to make it orange man's fault. So that's really confusing to him. So what's going on now? Um, Cenk, I, I got this one. Just call on me. I'll, I'll tell you what the answer is. I'll tell you what's going on here. What's going on here is that a group of people Black Americans who are more likely to be anti-Semitic are committing anti-Semitic attacks more often. There's a lot of anti-Semitism and not all of it is directly linked to the right wing. Um, I mean, it goes back thousands of years, obviously, of so there's a ton. Now to the untrained ear, what John Iderola just said there might sound like he's actually approaching or at least in the neighborhood of the truth. I mean, Jenk is completely confused. He's perplexed. How could 
a group of people that are statistically, through polling, year after year, shown to be more anti-Semitic than the general population be committing these anti-Semitic attacks. S totally confusing. I, I can't even fathom it. Honestly, my head exploded four times making this video. But John Irola, he says, you know what? Not every anti-Semitic attack is directly linked to the right wing. Which sounds true until you realize that later in this video, John Iarola is going to argue for an indirect link to the right wing. But first, Jank Uger has to blame the right wing for thousands of years of anti-Semitism. Go for it. But but and, remember, uh, the thing that goes back thousands of years it is the right wing hatred of, of, and I don't mean that in like, oh, I knew who the political associations of the people. <laughs> oh my God. Jang just said that the thousands of years of anti-Semitism, I don't know why I'm doing Bernie Sanders again, the thousands of years of anti-Semitism is due to the right wing. You know, the MAGA pharaoh in ancient Egypt, which I guess would be mega because it would be make Egypt great again, which is kind of way more awesome than MAGA now that I thought about it. Who doesn't want to wear mega hats everywhere? It's like Mega Man. Oh, oh, I'm tying them all together. Mega Man, Capcom, games. That's how we learn the anti-Semitism. So when you have extreme right wingers, they do bigotry, they do racism, they do anti-Semitism, and they do it all across the world. So in a sense, we understand that. But seriously, this is the legitimate analysis put forward by the Young Turks, that all anti-Semitism is due to the right wing, even thousands of years ago, before we had what we would call a right wing. All right, I mean, th that's your argument. Let's get to John Iderola saying that this is still Trump's fault somehow. Like, like we because we've been covering this so much, for us, one of the shocking things is how accepted anti-Semitism is within the Republican Party. Wait, what? First of all, why are we even talking about the Republican Party? There's no reason we should be talking about the Republican Party. Second, you're saying that anti-Semitism is widely accepted in the Republican Party, so widely accepted in the Republican Party, but not on the left. I mean, that whole march movement, you know, the Women's March that runs all these other marches and their founders being directly connected to Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, which is an anti-Semitic hate group. That, 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 what does that have to do with the left other than the fact that Democratic politicians speak with the leaders and they speak at those events, I, that's nothing. The Republican Party, they're really accepting it. You can have Steve King, it's totally fine. We'll take him off his committees, but he's totally still congressman, everything can vote. Whoa, 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 Steve King, hold on, hold on, hold on. And for, for the record, if I'm wrong about this, then tell me in the comments. But if I remember it correctly, and I'm definitely not gonna look it up because I don't care, and I'm pretty confident that I'm right about this, Steve King did not get in trouble for saying anything anti-Semitic. He said some weird statements about how white nationalism is okay or ethno-nationalism for white people is okay. And then Republicans removed him from all of his committees and the Republican National Committee started supporting his opponent in the primaries. So Steve King is not an example of anti-Semitism being accepted in the Republican Party. That's just not the case. He didn't say anything anti-Semitic as far as I know. I could be wrong, but regardless, whatever he did say, which I think was pro-white nationalism or pro-ethno-nationalism, he was immediately sanctioned to the full extent of the Republican Party. They removed him from all of his committees. Like, they can't force him to resign, but they've done everything they can to get him out of power and help get him out of office. The same is not true from the Democratic Party, whether it's the state, federal, or local level. Joan Terrell Page, who is a school board member in Jersey City. Jersey City is the site of one of these attacks. The marketplace shooting happened in Jersey City. She released a long Facebook post about how Hasidic Jews are brutes that are bullying people out of their neighborhood, bullying black people out of their neighborhood. She released this post after the shooting. It was a justification for an anti-Semitic attack. That was in December. That was December 18th-ish when the story broke. That's when a lot of the articles are dated. She's still in office today. And in fact, she's getting support from Democrats today. And the reason she's getting that support is because according to them, this obviously long anti-Semitic post, which by the way, she deleted because it was an anti-Semitic post, wasn't anti-Semitic at all. It was just a commentary on gentrification, a commentary on gentrification after an anti-Semitic attack happened 
in that area. But, but just a normal commentary on gentrification. Just nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Right after an anti-Semitic attack, nothing to do with it. And you know, uh, like you, you have all these people who are accepted into the party. But the thing is, once they're in there, like that stuff just becomes normalized. The retweets and the quotes and the speeches and all of that just goes out there and gets to everyone. And and the thing about normalization is that it. It sort of pulls the the center of gravity on this thing in a in a dangerous direction. Like not every like so I I personally believe that that um, uh, Republican elected politicians are moving farther and farther away from supporting democracy. But if they're successful, it's not just going to be getting their own voters to question whether democracy is the way that a government should be organized. It's also causing other people to question it. These things that that seem so weird initially become normalized. Yeah, that's right. According to John Iderola, the Republican Party and Donald Trump are so anti-Semitic that they're actually normalizing it so much that the people who hate Donald Trump and are opposed to everything humanly possible that Donald Trump does. Like if Donald Trump had water in the morning, they'd be like, no more water. Forget Trump wants water, water's white supremacist. No more water in the morning. That's how these people are. But somehow they're picking up his anti-Semitism. They're picking up his anti-Semitism in higher rates than his actual supporters because that somehow makes sense according to John Iderola. Now I know I haven't mentioned this thus far, but Donald Trump is not anti-Semitic. First of all, he's one of the most pro-Israeli presidents in history. And I know a lot of people are gonna say that being pro-Israel is not the same thing as being philo-Semitic, which is, you know, pro-Jewish person. But anti-Semites are typically not pro-Israel, and Donald Trump is undoubtedly pro-Israel. Also, his daughter converted to Judaism to marry his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who's in charge of like 18 different things in the White House. He clearly has a close relationship with his daughter and his son-in-law, and he's put his son-in-law in charge of a bunch of different things. He's also a real estate developer from New York City, so if he was Orange Man version of Hitler, I think somebody would have noticed before he ran for office and it became politically advantageous to try to pin him in this way. Now, the reason I'm bringing up Donald Trump's Israel policy, his close relationship, and the fact that he puts Jared Kushner in charge of a lot of things, and his daughter converting to Judaism, is because this is what the white supremacists actually hate about Donald Trump. If you go and look up a lot of these attacks that they're trying to pin on him, part of the reason that these attacks are occurring is because they believe that Donald Trump is being controlled by the very Jewish people that John Iderola is trying to accuse him of being hateful towards. Now, the reason I shouldn't have to bring that up is because again, and it's so obvious, statistically, black and Hispanic people, the people committing these attacks, against the Jewish population in the areas that we're talking about are among the least likely people to be supporters of Donald Trump. It's just that it's so intense in a particular area in a particular time that I wonder if there's something layered on top of the normal bigotry, anti-Semitism and horrific anti-Semitic attacks and violent attacks. Something layered where is someone driving it in this particular instance? like? In instigating the feigned confusion throughout this video is really starting to get on my nerves. Is there somebody instigating this attack? I, I don't know, maybe there's something uniquely behind it. No, this is not the Crown Heights riots of 1991, you know, where Al Sharpton instigated the attacks, the anti Semitic attacks from the black community, and it, I think it left somebody dead. No, no, it's not that situation. It's just normal anti Semitism from a population that is statistically shown to be more anti-Semitic than the general population, Jank. Nothing instigating it. Oh wait, now that I mention it, Al Sharpton, not really a right winger, Jank. In fact, you were competing with him for the same job at MSNBC and you lost to him because Al Sharpton pledged that he would never criticize Barack Obama. But I guess, you know, Donald Trump was probably living, in fact, we know for a fact, that Trump was living in New York City in 1991, so he probably caused that too. Why that particular, you know, line of attack in is so specifically in such a in a, in a narrow area, relatively speaking. So there's just something extra weird about these attacks, yeah. and and I feel like we haven't really solved it yet. No, Jank, you're not listening to me. Well, I know for a fact that you're not listening to me because I'm responding to a pre-recorded video. But I hope that you might discover this video and then listen to what I'm saying, because we actually have solved this. In fact, there was a documentary that came out called Defamation that featured a Jewish journalist going through these same neighborhoods in Brooklyn 
and talking to people, and it got real anti-Semitic really quickly. Special thank you to Nuance Bro for sending me over this video when I couldn't find him on my own. I thought I should speak with some of the blacks in the neighborhood to see what they feel about anti-Semitism. Actually, they're part of the mind control system that they use through television and the media. The higher ups. That, 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 that right there is in a book called The Elders of the Protocols of Zion. I was in like 1898. They was talking about how the Jews will use TV and media and propaganda to control the world and take over the world. It is. It's and they're a, implementing it right now. <laughs> it, it's actually, when you read it, they say it's false. But when you read it, you see everything coming to light. That's 2009. That's when Barack Obama first took office when it was released. It was probably shot during the campaign. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it's Donald Trump's fault. Maybe it's just that he was living in New York and thus he inspired these people to have these evil anti-Semitic thoughts because orange man bad. Or maybe President Trump actually time traveled back in time to stir up racism to stop Barack Obama from getting elected because he's the first black president and orange man bad, orange man racist, time travel invented to improve upon his racism and influence the past. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But what I do know is that when there's a will to blame bad orange man for something that clearly he has no connection to, the Young Turks and the far left will find a way. Yeah, John, to your point, look, th this is what's so troubling about uh, a culture of hate uh, because once it starts, you know, it unravels and, and we've opened up a Pandora's box of hate in this country. And when I say we, I mean Donald Trump and I mean the right wing, I do. Uh, and that, that is where it springs from. Now it's springing to areas that you couldn't predict. Yup, and when Jane says we, he means Donald Trump and the right wing. They are the cause of all of the bad things in the whole world. The Crown Heights riot, 1991, Donald Trump, New York, put the connections together. 2009, that interview on the street, President Trump time traveled to try and stop Obama by influencing people to be anti-Semitic. All, all of it's Donald Trump. Anti-Semitism going back thousands of years, think about it, Donald Trump probably time traveled, became the MAGA, I mean the mega pharaoh in ancient Egypt, which makes a lot of sense because he likes to build things and that's why they started building pyramids and he also likes to cover things in gold and everything's covered in gold in all the movies that I watch about ancient Egypt. So, I mean, if you really think about it, it all makes sense. And by really think about it, I mean, if you're completely brain dead, this line of reasoning makes sense. Uh, and I don't, I have no, I, I, you know, maybe I'm too, the guy's African American, so that's why I keep pausing. Like, why is he a right winger Nazi? I don't, I haven't heard of too many African American Nazis. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping it real, right? It's not a common occurrence. Jake. You shouldn't be confused or perplexed by the idea that these attacks are coming from black Americans, because as I've said many times throughout this video, black Americans are a demographic of people more likely to be anti-Semitic than the general population. Perhaps if you didn't assign your production team to look for B-roll of Donald Trump, white supremacists, and a bunch of things that are completely disconnected from this story, and actually had them look up information related to this issue, then you'd have something of value to say. But instead, we're looking at one of the most embarrassing videos I've ever seen on your network, and that's saying a lot. And by the way, I'm only like halfway into this video and I'm already tired of talking about it because it's so bad and you're missing the mark so horribly that there's really nothing I can say without continuously repeating myself from this point on. Right, it's not a common occurrence, uh, is there, some anti-Semitism in the African American community, of course, there is in every community, right? Mm -hmm. So I get that phenomenon, and so anyway, bottom line is, I, I don't, I hope that this is not met metastasizing. Jenk, it is a common occurrence. It's been going on for years, and just so you know, a story does not come into existence the moment you decide to talk about it on your program. And the idea that we're gonna ask the question if there is a possibility that there's anti-Semitism in the African American community is ridiculous. Again, there is statistically more anti-Semitism in that community than other communities across the country. Now look, I've made my point, and if it's not obvious to you that the Young Turks has no interest in talking about what's actually going on with this story, then I don't know what I can do for you. I can't go on and review the rest of this video because it gets really stupid really quickly. Like they start talking about how Donald Trump tweeting inside a 
four or five hours about this incident is somehow a secret code or a signal boost to the evil racists that support him because whatever. And that's right after they criticized Ken Cuccinelli for tweeting too fast about this incident. Because even that small standard of being consistent within the same video is too difficult for the Young Turks. But that's all I really have for you guys today. That's it. No more. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. You know the drill. If you like this video, like it, share it. Patreon, subscribe, star, Teespring, PayPal, and uh, Venmo. This has been me talking about the Young Turks because 2020 will not be that different from 2019. Till next time.